Hi everybody, 42,000 in Jones Stadium to see Baylor, who has not lost a conference road game since 1989, invade Jones Stadium. Grant Taft's last trip to the Hub City. Well, let's pick it up with Baylor's first possession. After taking the kickoff, first and 10 from the 44, David Mim sweeps left. He gets three yards before he's knocked down by Sean Jackson. Second and 13, J.J. Joe passes to Miller. He picks up 15, first and 10 from the Tech 41. Joe on the keeper, flag down, fumble. Anthony Wiley recovers for the Red Raiders, but bring it back. Texas Tech was offsides. Three plays later, Joe gives straight up the middle to Robert Strait. He is into the end zone for the touchdown. So Baylor, 56 yards, five plays, 133 on the drive, and they go up seven to nothing. Two possessions into the game for Texas Tech. This is third and 15. Robert Hall com passes complete to Darrell Mitchell. He gains 25. Darrell would have over 100 yards in pass receptions on the evening. Here's the old standby, Lloyd Hill. Two plays later, he gets four. Three plays later, second and 10. Bruce Hill on the draw and he gained six. You're gonna see some great blocking by that offensive line today. Third and four from the Baylor 20. Robert Hall wants to throw, ball is tipped, but complete to Donald Marshall and what a whack he took and held on to the football. First and 10, Texas Tech set up at the Baylor 12. The Bammer gets the ball and he gets 10. Flag is down right there and it was a face mask. Three plays later, third and two. Robert pitches back to Bam, he throws. He's a fullback, not a passer. Ball is intercepted. Second and 15, Joe wants to pass, does complete. To Bonner, gain of 12, Donnie Brooks pushes him out. Four plays later, third and three from the 40. Joe options left. Flags fly all over the place, and Baylor is going to have to punt. Delaney back to punt. Tracy Saul, best in the universe, back to uh, take the kick. He does, goes along the right side, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, and pushed out and down at the 31. That's the way the uh, first quarter ended. Baylor seven, Texas Tech nothing. First and 10 now, Texas Tech at the 31. Robert wants to pass, looks, throws, Caught, Darrell Mitchell, gain of 29 yards, and he plays to the crowd. On the next play from the 40, the Bammer up the middle and he gets nine. Look at that blocking up front. Second and five, two plays later from the 36. Robert wants to throw. Lloyd Hill with the reception, gain of 10. First and 10 now at the Baylor 26. Look at Robert driving the Baylor defense crazy. He goes out of bounds after gaining 12. First and 10 from the Baylor 14. Ball given to the Bammer. Look at big number four, beat it to the corner. He is in, touchdown. Texas Tech goes 69 yards in five plays. It took one minute and eight seconds. John Davis with the extra point and Texas Tech seven, Baylor seven. As we told you at the top of the show, Baylor had not lost a road game in conference play since 1989. J.J. Joe trying to get away, but there is Aaron Armour stopping him for a short gain, and Baylor has to punt again. I'll tell you, I thought about coming back and uh, becoming a punter after watching Delaney punt for the Bears. He did get a good roll there, good for 44 yards. Tech now at the uh, Texas Tech 30. Bruce Hill goes over right tackle. He's in the clear, finally pulled down after 28. Three plays later, third and six from the Baylor 38. Robert wants to throw. There's Lloyd Hill, great catch. Gain of 21, first and 10 from the Baylor 17. Robert wants to throw again, no, he scrambles. He goes right and picks up 11 before he's pulled down. Two plays later, second and two from the Baylor two. The Bammer up the middle, he fumbles, and Baylor recovers again. So there's a possible 14 points that go by the wayside. But the Raider defense holds. 
This is second and 11 from the 19. J.J. Joe wants to pass. Good position and a great interception by number 26, Donnie Brooks, on the play. Let's take it to eight minutes, 32 seconds left in the half. First and 10 from the 31. Robert wants to pass. Now he tucks it and keeps and goes for 11. Two plays later, third and four from the 48. Robert looks to pass. Complete to Lloyd. Gain of 11 also. Great second effort. If Lloyd Hill has improved, it is his second effort this year. Let's move to third and 12. Robert again. Scrambling. Picks up 11 before he is pushed out of bounds. After picking up the first down, this is second and 10. Hall again. Quarterback draw. He's going to pick up 16 before he's knocked down. Three plays later, third and five. The drive comes to a halt as Cravens busts through and knocks uh, Robert down for a loss of nine. Fourth and 14, John Davis, field goal try from 31, no good. So 17 points have gone by the wayside for Tech. First and 10 for Baylor. Robert straight up the middle, he only gets three. Good, good Raider defense on this evening. Fourth and seven, Baylor to punt. That's Delaney, ball does not turn over. Tracy calls for the fair catch at the 44. That was a 43-yard punt. Second and 10 from the 44. Robert to throw. There's Darrell Mitchell. Look at these moves. And he's going to pick up 21 before he is knocked down. First and 10 from the Baylor 36. Robert back again. Quick feet. Goes up the middle. Cuts to the sideline. And he picks up eight. Let's move two plays later. Third and two from the 28. The Bammer takes the pitch. He moves right. And look at this speed as he picks up 27 yards before he's pushed out at the two-yard line. Let's make it on the very next play. Bam, up the middle. Touchdown. Texas Tech, 56 yards, seven plays. The drive took one minute and nine seconds. Davis, the extra point. Texas Tech, 14. Baylor, seven. Let's leave it up to the defense to uh, take over the rest of the half for the Raiders. Squib kick from Davis. Robertson picks it up. A Little bit of sloppy tackling, finds the sideline, finally pulled down after a 26-yard gain. Second and 10 from the 37. J.J. Joe wants to pass. He throws, Bell has it, tripped up by Tracy Saul. First and 10 from the 32. Joe wants to pass. There's Bonner. He's out of bounds after a gain of 13. First and nine. Baylor with the field goal. It is no good. At halftime, it is Texas Tech 14, Baylor 10. At halftime, lots of Red Raider Club activities around the state in the coming week. Take a look. Would you believe in the first half, Texas Tech had 297 yards rushing and 231 yards passing? Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Let's pick it up with Baylor's first possession. First and 10, Robert straight off right tackle. Mike Lissio and Sean Jackson on the tackle. On the next play, there's Mike Lissio again. No gain on the play. That sets up Mr. Delaney for another punt. High snap, but he gets it off. Ball again does not turn over. Tracy calls for the fair catch, and Tech is set up at the Baylor 40. First and 10, Robert to Lloyd. Gain of 13. Looked like he uh, tried to pick his pocket. It was pass interference, but we took the gain anyway. On the next play, the Bammer over right tackle. He gains 22. That gave him 115 on the evening already, and we're just starting the second half. First and 10 from the Baylor 25. The Bammer goes right again. Outruns most of the Baylor defenders and picks up 11. Four plays later, fourth and six. John Davis on to try a 27-yard field goal. It's good. 
50 yard drive, seven plays. There's the man from Mississippi. As the uh, horse has a good time along the sidelines, Texas Tech 17 and Baylor 10, 11, 27 left in the third quarter. Baylor takes over on the first play. J.J. Joe goes down for no gain. Make it second and 10. Joe to pass. It's intended for McKenzie, but great pressure there by John Pitts. So Delaney comes on to punt again. 33-yard effort. Looks like a Charlie Huff knuckleball. Tracy takes it at the 47. First and 10 from the 47. Robert wants to throw, and he'll find Darrell Mitchell with a nice catch right there. Darrell had uh, six catches for 126 yards and a crowd-pleasing effort all evening long. On the next play, the Bammer goes for eight. And on third and five from the Baylor seven, you're gonna see a great catch here, the first collegiate touchdown for Bruce Hill. Liked it so much, I wanna show you a replay of this one. There's Bruce, the Fort Worth native. And we'll show you again, Robert to Bruce Hill. Looked like Lloyd Hill right there, didn't he? Touchdown, Texas Tech. 47 yards, four plays, one minute, 38 seconds on the drive. Davis extra point is good. Texas Tech 24 and Baylor 10, 8.41 to go in the third quarter. Let's pick it up second and seven for Baylor from the 23. Mims will take the draw play and he only gets two. Quincy White, the first man there. Third and five, Joe wants to pass. It's picked off by Chris Kinney, number two. That is his first collegiate interception, and the Raiders are set up in shop. Two plays, nets them minus two yards. So on third and 12, Robert passes to Mitchell, and he gains 10. Let's make it fourth and two from the Baylor 21. Tech takes a timeout. That brings on John Davis, 38-yard attempt. Kick is high, up, and good. Five minutes, 56 seconds left, third quarter. Texas Tech 27 to 10. Baylor back with the ball from the 21. Joe on the option play, and he gains 17. He is a dangerous customer. First and 10 now from the Baylor 38. J.J. Joe wants to pass. He does long, deep, and great catch there by Miller. Gain of 42 on the play. Two plays later, second and seven from the 17. Bell stopped finally out of bounds by Tracy Saul and Mike Lissiol gains two. Move it to third and 10 from the 20. Joe's pass is deflected, almost intercepted. Brady Field with the deflection. Fourth and 10, Weir attempts a 37-yard field goal. It is wide to the right. Let's move it down to second and 14 from the Texas Tech 16. There you see that defense on the sidelines. Robert in trouble. He's gonna be sacked by Fontenot, loss of 10. That brings on Robert King, who is having an outstanding year punting the football. He kicks it 51 yards, and you're gonna see some great coverage. Damon Wickware will be the first man there. He's joined by friends, as Baylor finds it's not too safe to stand around and watch. First and 10 from the 45. Joe wants to pass. Mims is really pumped by Dwayne Bryant. I want to show you that again. What's number nine, the California Junior College product. And boy, what a lick that was. First and 10 now from the Texas Tech 33 after Dwayne gets through celebrating. Joe keeps himself. Finally going to be knocked out of bounds by Bryant and Tracy Saul. He gains 15. First and 10 from the 18. Joe being chased. He's in trouble. He fumbles the football. It's free, but Baylor's Bellamy recovers. That's the end of the third quarter. Texas Tech 27-10. Fourth and two now at the 10. Joe, terrible pitch. Ball bounces free. Baylor eventually comes up with it, but the ball goes over on downs. Texas Tech, however, three plays, can't move the ball. King has to come in to punt. He hits it, and it goes for 30 yards on the Texas Tech 38-yard line, third and 10 from the 38. Joe wants to pass. He's in trouble. Sean Jackson chasing. Joe takes it upfield. 
cuts to the right sideline, finally going to be pushed out of bounds by Chris Kenny, and he gains 18. Four plays later, first and two from the Tech Two. Robert Strait smacked by Damon Wickware, no gain. Second and goal from the Tech Two. Joe options right, jumps into the end zone, and Baylor is back on the board. Texas Tech 27, Baylor 17, 10.07 left in the ball game. Let's pick up action first and 10 after the kickoff from the 19. Robert to the old faithful Lloyd Hill. Good for a gain of 15. Three plays later, third and eight from the Tech 36. The Bammer, nice moves. You don't teach those. He goes for 17. Two plays later, second and nine from the 46. Robert to throw. Lloyd catches. He had nine on the evening. The drive stalls. Fourth and seven. Robert King into punt. High and look at this bounce. Inside the 10. Going to be downed right there by Zach Thomas at the three yard line, 41 yard punt. Second and 10 now for Baylor from the three. Joe to Bonner. He gains 11. First and 10 from the Baylor 14. Joe will scramble, but he's in worlds of trouble. Good rush. Mike Lissio finally knocks him down, loss of one. Two plays later, third and 11 from the Baylor 13. Joe's pass intended for Miller. Great coverage there by Anthony Wiley. And you see the congratulations on the sideline. Fourth and 11 from the 13. Delaney. Has to punt. Not a bad punt for him. Tracy Saul takes it at the 40. He cuts left. He finds a wall, makes a nice move. He's inside the 30, the 20. He may go all the way. 54-yard return, longest in the Southwest Conference in 1992. First and six. It won't be easy. Bruce Hill is smacked down for a loss of one. Two plays later, third and goal from the Baylor six. Robert wants to pass. Wide open is Daryl Mitchell. And the little man with six catches for 126 yards on the day wants to celebrate. We hope we find him before the A&M game. John Davis, extra point. It is good. Texas Tech 34, Baylor 17, 3.52 left in the ball game. Thought we'd close it out with the defense. Joe wants to pass, lots of time. Chris Kenny breaks it up. Two plays later, second and 20, following a penalty from the eight. Joe wants to pass, broken up again by Byron Wright. Don't try this at home, thought we'd show you that move again. <laughs> Third and 20 from the Baylor six. Joe wants to pass, he's in worlds of trouble, safety. That moves the score to Texas Tech 36, Baylor 17. Well, it's not over. A chance for some of the kids that haven't played a great deal this year to get in. Thought we'd show you those highlights, but before that, Tracy Saul takes the kickoff. He's across the 30, the 40. He's pushed out of bounds in Baylor territory. Jason Clemens is now the new quarterback for the uh, Red Raiders. He hands off to Classical Freeman and he gains eight. Three plays later from the 31. Jason Clemens gives off to Larry Starr and look at number 40 go. He's inside deep Baylor territory. That's the final play we show you. Baylor falls to Texas Tech 36 to 17. Goodbye Grant, bring on the Aggies. Uh, it was a great win. Great win against the football team. It's been a nemesis for us for a long time. And, of course, that's two in a row, and that helps. But uh, I was real proud of our football team. You know, they uh, got off to a little rocky start again. And uh, if you're not careful, you say, well, here we go again. And But our guys never did that. They they never even never even entered their mind. And, and uh yeah, you know, they hung in there and they kept their head up and they kept on and kept on and kept on and I thought it was a complete ball game for 60 minutes. The offense did an outstanding job. You know, 500 yards, uh, great blocking. The running game was reestablished. Uh, 
thought the scrambles by Robert were great. I thought the uh, the receiving was good. Protection was good. Made marked improvement. Uh, Turn right around the defense, and we played an outstanding football game. We looked a little bad right before the half on that drive, and yeah, you know, we just got a little too protective, overly protective, and uh, and uh, but we came back, responded well, and played a great second half. Um, really kept a lot of pressure on them. The special teams were excellent tonight. I thought Coach Maskey's done a nice job with them and and made great progress and uh, some great improvement in those areas. And so when you do that, it's a complete football game. And we said a long time ago, if we play complete games, we have a chance. We really do. We, uh, it takes a lot of the taste, bad taste out of your mouth after last week because we, uh, you know, it's a different kind of football game tonight, and it was one that uh, that I thought our guys really responded to and and really uh, hung in there and did all the things it takes. We just came together and played as a team and done what all we practiced on this week, and we just came together and played hard. Uh, I noticed uh, early in the first quarter the team started uh, was struggling a little bit to get things going, as in the other games, but once the first quarter ended, you got that momentum that carried you through the final three. Uh, what do you do after the first quarter to get things going on the defensive side? We, struggled, we struggled a little bit, and we came back, and we just came back united and just played hard. Well, we can get better. We can get better than what we did tonight. We made a lot of mistakes, and, uh, and those mistakes will be corrected this week. And uh, we have like a little logo on defense it's called the Iceman, intensity, concentration, concentration, and effort. And uh, I think the offense and defense, everyone were Iceman tonight, and that's what we needed. You know, everybody came together and played and kept their heads up and kept the intensity, and that's what we needed. Let's talk a minute about the option attack that Baylor showed you this evening. Uh, kind of versatile in times, and they passed a lot more than a lot of people thought they did, uh, thought they would. Uh, what did y'all do to get ready for the option? Attack tonight. How do you think you fared against it? Well, um, you know, during the week we were all concerned about people make want to make plays so bad that they may, you know, uh, forget their responsibility. What we worked on is uh, just ke just keeping with your rules. You know, worry about what you got to do and help the whole defense about. I think we contained the pitch and the option very well. We we, sh uh, we shut straight down. You know, in the uh, first half he broke off runs, but then you know we got together in the second half. You know, and uh, we just clogged up the middle and that's what we needed. Bouncing on outside, let the cornerbacks and uh, outside linebackers take care of them. Our defensive line played an excellent game tonight. You know, we hadn't been able to stop the run up the middle, but we did tonight. It made it a lot easier on the secondary because we knew they had to pass. And, you know, once you get in that, that situation, you can really concentrate on the pass. And, and you know, it, it made it a lot easier for us. Did, uh, did Baylor pass more out of the option formation than you thought they would coming into the game? Uh, no, I, I thought they were going to pass more. They didn't, they didn't really. They, they stuck with their basic game plan, and we watched them on film. Uh, they didn't really do anything new. Uh, they hung it up a few times, but otherwise they, they ran it basic, and we, we stopped the run. So. Let's talk a second about your, your great interception there uh, over the shoulder, uh, a great catch. Uh, describe that play for us as it happened. Uh, Melvin's a good receiver. He's tall. Uh, I've been knowing him a long time, my long jump track against him. So I I just know I had to come up with something because he can get up, he can jump. He got good jump, jumping ability. So I I had to keep him interfering him at the time. So I just went inside and tried and made, and made the play. It's, I think that, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, we did last year. I, we're just starting a little earlier, and I think that this offense is, is really rejuvenated after, after a, you know, a pretty bad showing in Oregon. But uh, you know, we just we, we feel good, and we have some we have some confidence going to the A&M game, which we need. And uh, you know, it's like even in halftime, we, you know, there's a, I think so, you know, someone asked me about uh, confidence after you know kind of squandering you know 21 points away, and we just felt good because we knew we were moving the ball and we knew we could, and we came out in the third quarter and did you know more of the same. You know, if you don't play bad in the special teams, you got a chance. If you play bad in the special teams, you know, you're always in the hole. And uh, But I thought we did. I thought we responded good. Robert missed it. He, he punted a couple times not nearly as good as he can. And uh, one of them, he was lucky. It rolled down. We killed it inside the 10. And, and uh, we missed a field goal. But uh, overall, we, we were a lot, a lot better in coverage. Uh, a lot better on the returns, a lot better, a lot more crispness than we have had. And, uh, you know, I thought our guys did a great job of covering kickoffs tonight. So it was, that was, a, that was marked improvement and it's something we needed to do. You get the momentum now at A&M and at North Carolina State the next two weeks, but that's what you had to have going into, especially the A&M ball game. Shoot, yeah, we're, uh, that's good. I think that we'll respond. I think our guys will look forward to playing A&M and, 
you know, uh, I don't know what's going to happen down there, but I'll tell you one thing. We're going to go down there to win the game, and we're going to go down there with some confidence and fire our best shot and see what happens. But uh, I would think that we'll have the best week of practice this week that we've had. And, and uh, you know, we're beat up a little bit. We've got some guys bunged up. We've got to get those guys well and get them ready to go. But uh, it certainly makes it a lot easier to get ready for A&M after winning this ball game. And uh, consequently, when that's the case, well, uh, you know, that gives you a chance to, uh, to do a lot of, uh, lot of good work this week.